Father in heaven, we say thank you. We appreciate you. We return all the glory and honor to you. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, even as we go into your word again tonight, Lord, we pray that Holy Spirit will take charge of all we'll be doing here tonight in the name of Jesus. And at the end, all glory and honor is returned back to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' name we pray.
Lord, I want to thank you. Thank you for this destiny night. A night of coronation. Thank you for all that you have prophesied that is coming to pass tonight. Thank you for all that you are set to do. E caraba sienda kapalo kosia e pila kapari ala kose de ba the one who reveals secret things before it comes to pass me leke li ala kapako se de ga father i plead tonight in this coronation let the measure just a measure of what you have endowed my fathers let it fall upon me tonight in the name of jesus for as many who are ready tonight let the coronation begin in the name of Jesus. Ha, everywhere you have been oppressed. He said he sent forth his word and he healed them and delivered them from destruction. I pray for you tonight because you came, because you have faith and you joined us tonight. The Lord set you free in the mighty name of Jesus. My angels on assignment. Let there be performance in the mighty name of Jesus. And when we are done tonight, let us be very careful to return our glory back unto you. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. If dominion has started with you, I want you to go ahead and shout hallelujah. I want to thank my dad and my mom for this great privilege to stand before this exalted altar. And of course, all our leaders, 
in the national youth affairs there are true leaders that introduce us to our fathers because tonight something significant is happening is a night of coronation where there is going to be a transfer of dominion in the mighty name of jesus i pray the lord strengthens you and help you in all your endeavors in the mighty name of jesus can you help me celebrate the southwest choir for that powerful rendition you know in this kingdom music is not like in the world is a transportation it takes us from one level of grace to another level of grace once again let me celebrate the southwest choir for leading us in that powerful session tonight i've been asked to speak on the topic dominion and i'm going to take my test from the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 listen to me brethren all the speakers that have spoken before me read the same scripture but something is very important repetition is retention so i'm going to read it back to you again the word, the word of god is alive the bible says oh thank you holy spirit before i came tonight while i was praying the lord said to me it's a night of coronation because there are mantles that's going to be delivered to younger people here in this service so when this former speaker was speaking i was blessing the lord maybe god thought i would be afraid to say it he decided to start with my brother can i pray for you the mantle is not just hanging around it's being delivered to you in the mighty name of jesus listen to me brethren from this exalted altar miracles breakthroughs we begin to flow from here to the old auditorium to the choir side to those who are watching us online from nigeria to canada to us the power of god will flow in the mighty name of jesus when the blind see on your row when the lame walk on your row please praise god violently because god is on the move of doing great things tonight genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 the bible says then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creeps on the earth so god created man in his in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female emphasis he created them then god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it and dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth you see this conversation that happened with the spirit that's in the gods when they were having this conversation man was not in existence but what the lord introduced us to was his nature number one he introduced us to his character number two number three he introduced us to his authority and the one i love so, so much he introduced us to life but you know from the very beginning the first problem of man was his inability to come into the understanding of who he is identity crisis and that was why when the devil came he promised a man what he already have but when the, the devil fell the devil was looking for what he did not have but man failed on what he already have why because of ignorance in psalm chapter 8 psalm chapter 8 verse 5 to 6 the bible says for you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor you have made him to have dominion over all the works of your hands you have put him all things under his feet i wish the man knew when the devil came he would have reminded the devil i have all that you are trying to get from me a limited man call adam 
But glory to God, there was an introduction of Jesus who came to redeem us back to the original plan of God. In Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8 to 11, Hebrews 2, verse 8 to 11, the Bible says, because of his death, he reintroduced us back to the original plan of God for us to dominate. Glory to God. What is dominion? In the year of dominion, in the year 20, 2018, our father in the law gave us this definition. I found this in my diary. That Jesus said, dominion is an active word. He said, dominion is a military and very powerful word. I love it so much. When you say dominion, it is to rule. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, he says, subdue. Not just being in charge, you must also be active. Why? It is your birthright. From the beginning, God created you to be like that. Dominion is to be indomitable against every forces of air. When you see a carrier of dominion, anywhere they appear, God appears there. So, dominion is also a resultant of your deeper knowledge of the ministries in this kingdom. What you know, what you carry, determines how much you can dominate. When a man is in a village, who digs the ground and gets water and stop, and the white man will travel miles and come to the same place and dig the same ground and find oil. The more you are exposed to the knowledge of God in this kingdom, determines how much of the dominion you carry. In Colossians, Colossians chapter 1 verse 9, Colossians chapter 1 verse 9, listen to Paul addressing the people of Colossae. He said to them, for this reason, we, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask you that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the law, fully pleasing him, be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the work in the knowledge of god remember genesis chapter 1 verse 27 was talking about what will be the result when you become his image he said you are going to be fruitful and multiply but if you don't understand the mysteries of this kingdom you cannot operate in dominion in fact you will be an ordinary christian it doesn't matter the office you occupy I'm not talking about position because you can be popular and not have impact. Many of you are on social media because you have few people following you. You think you are a significant person. You are wrong. Popularity is not impact. In this kingdom, we understand power. Those who rule are subdue. Listen to me, brethren. It's not time to clap. Listen to me. Psalm chapter 49 verse 20. Psalm 49 verse 20. The Bible says, A man who is in honor, yet does not understand, is like a beast that perish. So you can occupy significant position. It's just a matter of time when you die. Because you will lack understanding. It takes the revelation of, of who you know that you are in Christ Jesus. You must know who you are in Christ Jesus for you to accomplish whatever God has put in your hands to do. Ah, that the Jesus said to us in the school of disciples, he said you are fighting a battle that is already won. How many of you are watching a match here? Not a live match. You are watching, watching highlight match. And you see your team that has won the match already. When you sit down there, adrenaline is not running through you because you know if they score you first, you are still going to win the match. That's a life of dominion. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Because of our time, let me quickly introduce you to two operations of dominion. How can you operate effectively in dominion? Number one, you must become light. 
God knew the importance of light. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, before he started any word of dominion, he first created light. He said, let there be what? Let there be light. And one way to come in contact with the life is through the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 130. Psalm 119 verse 130. The Bible says, the entrance of his word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Kai, in Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The access of the world that you are exposed to determines how far you can go in this kingdom. When you intensify in understanding the word of God, you become light yourself. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, the Bible says, you are the light of the world. A city set on the hill that cannot be hidden. That is being in charge. Why is it important to be light? Why? Why is it important to become light? This world is full of darkness. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of this world. Let me tell you, brethren, the only answer to darkness of this world is for you to become light. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, I will not be able to read because of our time. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, the latter part said, verse 5 says, And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. Kai, the devil is in the business of blinding many believers to live a mediocre life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, he said, Whose mind the God of this world has blinded? Miracle is sitting with you. But you don't have faith to carry it because the devil has bombarded your mind with doubt anointing is flowing in the room but yet you can't see it solution is seated problem is seated in the same row and because the problem lack understanding cannot see the light beside him and walk away with his problem can i pray for someone here tonight I don't care what you brought into this auditorium. I don't know the reason why you joined us online. But can I decree over your life? Tonight, the light of God will shine over your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Daniel chapter 5 verse 14. The Bible says, I have heard of thee, that the spirit of God is in thee, and that the light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Why is light important? Light is pure. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 to 9. Ephesians 5 8 to 9. Light and light is. Light sends warning. When you get to a traffic place, it can tell you to stop. It can tell you to hold on. It can tell you to go. Light is very important. Let me tell you another dimension to this. In the operation of the light, there's something very important that I found many young people have come into. We don't always operate alone in light. The Bible talks about us operating as a sort. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. Listen to me, brethren. Look at this. When this, this is a sort in a cup. Can you see? It's only visible when it's not active. Can I make it active? 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 Listen to me. When you look at it now, where are the particles you saw the other time? It's nowhere to be found. Some of you are operating in an atmosphere of being a sort. Why? God wants you to penetrate. He doesn't want you to come as a, as a shining star so that they don't kill you early. But he wants you to penetrate. Because salt penetrate. Listen to me. For the fact that I applied water into this, anyone that comes in contact with it will feel the taste, will feel the effect. Oh, you thought they tried to bury you. You thought they tried to, they don't want to give you a voice. It's a lie. God is part of that plan. He's trying to, he's not burying you. He's putting you down as a seed. Soon enough, you are going to grow. Kai, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Salt preserves. Kai, 
God has sent some of you as a guide. I was speaking to one of our PICP. I said to him, I said, you are a ladder to us to introduce us to the Father. That's your responsibility. God has planted you to find those who don't have talent early so that he can introduce God to them so that they can become mighty champions in future. But many want to operate a light. Yes, light and salt can, you can carry light and salt. But sometimes, God may be operating as a salt in your life and not as light. So don't get discouraged. Because you are effective. In the early days in Rome, they paid the Roman army with salt. That's how valuable it is. For the fact that you are not holding the mic does not mean you are not valuable in church. For the fact that you are a prayer warrior and you don't get to handle the mic does not mean you are not part of the success of that service. That the Jew told us, when he someone irons his dress and he goes to minister, when God wins shows, that person is getting a portion. You may be the salt that God is using. Look at those fathers that are seated there. Many of them have been playing the role of the salt for many years. You don't even know their name. But they are part of the success of the redeemed Christian church of God today. Fervent, serving the Lord. Ha! Ah, time is robbing me. God help me. Key, keys to establish your dominion. Let me give you two. I have five, but let me give you two because of our time. Number one, keys to establish your dominion. Brethren, young people, can I talk to you? It's what I call discipline. Discipline. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 16 to 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 16 to 17. The Bible says, Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and when your prince is feast in the morning. Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your prince feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. Some of you are indisciplined and you want to become a voice in that sector. You are wasting your time. I have a father who has bad many, many doctoral honors. If he was still in the war, he would have become the younger professors in Africa. And there you are. You are praying to Holy Spirit to help you pass an exam you didn't read for. You are a joker. Have you taken time to look at these fathers? You said they are old school, but you cannot match their result. It will take you years and divine help to match the current result they have. Oh, you said you are going out there because you want to go and look for new expression. Those new expressions are sitting down with your father in the secret place to listen to them. Because you lack understanding of who you are. Have you not wondered what kept them for 50 years, 40 years? That did you say, pray. Instead of you praying, you are playing. Some of you are supposed to become prayer partners now, but you are yet a prayer point. Some of you had opportunity, just a little opportunity in Potiphar's house. But now you have rested and sleeping and waking up every day, still in Potiphar's house, when God is waiting for you to become a prime minister. My time is up. Let me let you know before I go, before we pray. Number two, I promise you two. Number two, you must hunger to receive the spirit of wisdom. Listen to me. Yes, there are certain things you don't need to pray about. When God opens your eyes, you get instruction. The Bible says about David, and David inquired of the Lord, should I pursue? Should I stay back? Should I go forward? And God said to him, based on instruction, go. Some of you, God has said that you should go, but you are still waiting. You are only waste, waiting to be wasted. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your two hands unto God. But the other kappa, the gods of this world has blinded their mind. Many of you are full of doubt. That is why we are not seeing miracles today. You are shallow. You don't understand what the Spirit is saying per time. 
and you want miracle can you lift your hands up to god and cry to god father take away every veil of ignorance baptize me with the spirit of wisdom open your mouth and begin to pray cry for your destiny destiny tonight so that when our father and the lord will come you will be ready to receive 